So today, our plan is we're going to start with a little bit of a review of Math A stuff. Um, that means that we're going to go quickly through this. This is things that you should know. Um, so we'll start with, there's an appendix in your book called C, like Appendix C. We'll be doing C1, we'll take a break from that, do C.4. That's a little about factoring. You guys remember factoring? We're going to talk about factoring because that's a huge part of our class. Then we'll get back into that, talk about some equations. But right off the bat, we're going to talk about section C.1. And we're talking about equations. Just like you've had back from your, your pre-algebra days, we're going to deal with some basic equations here. So let's take a look at one. You know when I teach, I usually, if I, if I have steps to it, I'll put the steps off to this side so you can kind of follow along later. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation together and I'll put some steps on how to solve equations in general over to the right. Hey, just by a show of hands though, how many people feel they can solve this problem right now? Cool. If you raise your hand, what would you say would be, come on in, have a seat. What would you say would be your first step? What would you need to do here? Good, so why? So can we do anything with this problem the way it is right now without distributing first? Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do that. So our first step to any equation is we're going to look at both sides of our equation. And we're going to simplify both sides. Of course, our equal sign tells us what the sides of an equation are. If we look at the right-hand side, we really don't have much to simplify there. We have some non-like terms. We can't combine them. We can't distribute. On the left-hand side, we have some parentheses. So what simplify means to us is that we could distribute. <clears throat> and potentially, when you distribute, you may have to combine some like terms. So that's really what we mean. We mean get rid of parentheses. Combine some like terms, get it as simple as you can on each side. Are you guys with me still so far? Give me a head nod if you're with me still. Good. Let's give that a try. You guys already said distribute. So if we distribute, what does that mean? Someone else on the left-hand side of the room. What does distribute mean to you? Or my left? <laughs> Pass out evenly. How? Do we add? Multiply. Okay. So we're going to take which number, which term, and multiply it inwards. Okay. Does it go to the first one, the second one, or both of them? Uh, the first one. So I like to use those little arrows just to say this is what we're multiplying in. So really what we're having is we have our 4 times x, and we're going to get how much out of that? Uh -huh. And then what's the next sign that we're going to write? Okay. So this, really when you think about when you were taught distribution a long time ago, you were taught that the signs really do take care of themselves, right? If we take, consider this as a positive 4, we do positive 4 times positive x, we get positive 4x. We do positive 4 times, I know that's not negative 2, but you can kind of cheat a little bit and consider it to be a negative 2. And we do the 4 times negative 2, we're going to get our negative 8, or we're just going to write minus 8. That right there works because you can separate this as plus negative. You were taught that a long time ago. So we're going to distribute to both of these terms. We have our 6x minus 10. We check to see if we have any like terms to combine. Do we have any like terms in this problem? Mm -hmm. yeah. Be careful when you say that. Be careful when you say yeah. Um, let me rephrase and uh, give you a little definition of like terms, and then you can tell me yes or no, OK? Like terms have to be on the same side of an equation. Same side. So look over here. Do we have any like terms? No. no. These ones aren't, aren't considered like terms yet because they're not on the same side of the equation. Here we have variable, we have number, not like terms. Same thing here. These ones again are not like terms because they're not on the same side of the equation. So what do we do now? Would you add or subtract the 4 from the 6 and keep, move it to the other side? Would you just like subtract 4x minus 6x? 
Do we have to do it from one side or both sides? Both sides. And the idea is that what we're trying to do here is we're trying to make these like terms. And by, by subtracting from each side, we get this thing over here and make it a like term. So that's a great, great answer here. Our second step is, by the way, why do we want to move the 4x and not the 6x? Unless you have a positive number. That's great. So we're really, on our second step, going to get rid of the smaller variable. So we're going to say eliminate, by the way, I'm not the best speller, you're going to find this out. Uh, so if I make a mistake, don't hesitate, just let me know. Okay. And if we do the smaller variable, if we eliminate that variable, we're always going to have a positive variable on the side, and that's kind of nice. We don't have to divide by negatives at the end. So here, we'll look at this. We'll say, okay, we got our 4x, we have our 6x. We're going to identify the smaller one here. We're going to get rid of it by addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. You tell me. Subtraction. In this case, yeah, subtraction. You're, to eliminate a smaller variable, you're always either adding or subtracting. The only time you ever really divide is at the end, unless we have some fractions in there. But with our basic equations, that's the only time it happens. So we'll subtract 4x. Subtract 4x, and notice what happened. As soon as we have this on this side of an equation, maybe you've seen a teacher do this to show the, the size of an equation. Now these are like terms. Now you can combine them. So when we do this, what's our 4x and minus 4x? How much do we get there? there. What's left on the left-hand side? Negative. Good. Goes with the sign. That negative's still there. On the right-hand side, what do we have? 2x. Cool. Are we done? No. Now, because the idea is really solving. We're trying to get x by itself. What's the next step? We look where the variable's at. Uh, what's the next step here? So we can't deal with the 2 yet. We've got to deal with that 10. You're exactly right. So left-hand side, everybody, what do we get? Well, it wasn't everybody, but I'll take it. <laughs> Yeah, the minus 10 and the 10s are gone. Last step, what are we going to do to get the x by itself? What's the last step? Yeah. Typically, that's the last step all the time when we're solving equations is we're going to divide it. So when you divide by 2, what do we get? One, one, one. Can you check your work here? Yes. How do you check your work? You said it? Yeah. Plug it in, evaluate, take this one, put it in for the x, and see if it works out. This one's going to work out. Uh, but that's our, our way that we, we solve these equations. So the last step, <clears throat> step three, is you're going to solve the rest of it like you normally would a simple equation. I'm not going to give you every step because we've done this a lot in like your math, a, your math A days, all that old stuff. So solve as usual for the rest. Okay. Now I'm going to give you an opportunity to do one on your own. So I'm going to erase this. You have it in your notes. Do you guys have this one? Okay, I'm going to erase this and give you an opportunity to do one just so you can get your head wrapped around this because if you're anything like most people, did you do math over the summer? No. Unless you're in summer school. Did you do math over the summer? Yes. Yeah, did you really? Yeah. Awesome, me too. Online. But that's because, you know. I teach math. That's kind of my job. But yeah, most people don't, right? So let's get your brains kind of working on your own, because I just did that problem. Some of you helped me with it, but I want you guys to be sure that you can do this on your own. So try this really quick. Let's do 6x minus 3 equals 3 times the quantity x minus 5. Follow the steps down. Do what we need to do. I want you to simplify both sides, get rid of the smaller variable, solve it, and then check to make sure you have the right answer, okay? I'll be walking around. This is what I'm normally going to do in this class. If you need help, raise your hand or just look at me like, I don't know what's going on, and I'll help you out. Also, I'm going to pass out the roll sheet. Uh, just find your name and put your initials. I put a check mark, but for you guys, I want you to do the initials, okay?
By the way, you might not have got a fraction, but is it okay to get fractions when you're dealing with equations at the very end of your problem? Yeah, yes. Sure. So get rid of that. You don't always have to get one. <clears throat> We're going to give this a try here. Again, our first step is you're going to simplify it. If you have parentheses, get rid of them. We know how to distribute. So we're going to distribute any parentheses. Left-hand side, are we good or not? Do we have anything to simplify over here? No. Okay, so we're going to just rewrite that. On the right, hopefully you got 3x minus 15. Did you all get that? Yes. Awesome. Do we have any like terms? No. Good, good call. You remembered that. Like terms are each side of the equation. So what we're looking for now is after we've distributed and tried to combine like terms, we're going to eliminate the smaller variable. In our case, we're going to have that 3x. So we're going to eliminate the 3x, and here we're also going to be using subtraction. So as long as we do this to both sides, it's an equation after all, right? What you do to one side, you have to do the other. As long as we do that to both sides, we're good to go. Left-hand side, we'll get what? Okay. Right hand side, this is why we did that step. We're just going to have how much? Negative. Don't forget that negative. And lastly, we're going to solve it like we, we've already known how to do for a long time now. We're going to add 3, get rid of our constant term first. We'll have 3x equals hopefully negative. Is it negative 12 or negative 18? Okay, good. Remember your addition rules, right? Different signs. Subtract them, keep the sound of the bigger one. Absolute, absolute value speaking, of course. And lastly, we'll divide. So we'll divide this by 3. And hopefully, you got how much? Negative yeah. 4. Perfect. That's exactly right. Did you check it? Did you make sure you were right? Mm -hmm. Good. Good. How many people feel okay with solving these basic, basic equations? Of course, this is review, right? We should have this kind of down in our heads. Let's move on a little bit. We're going to talk about what happens when you have your favorite thing in the world. What's your favorite thing in the world mathematically? I'm being sarcastic. What's your favorite thing in the world? Yeah, say it. It starts with an F. It's not the other one that you... Fractions. Fractions and the other one maybe go together in your head. No, no. Fractions, yeah. You're, a lot of people were right on that one. Why don't people like fractions? Look intimidating. They had more stats. They do, they do, right? No one likes fractions because they're harder. That was, most people would agree in this class, probably pretty basic, pretty easy stuff. But as soon as you add fractions, people get A, intimidated, and B, maybe they forget all the steps. C, they get confused on which steps you use in which cases. So how would you like to learn in equations how to not ever deal with fractions? Tell me more. Okay, should we learn that? Yes. Let's do that. So let's give an example about some fractions and see how to overcome this thing. Let's try x over 6 minus x over 8 equals 1 8. Now, there are a few different ways to do this problem. One way would be, could be, to combine these first, then use it like a reciprocal idea. But there's another option if we have an equation. Do we have an equation up here? Yes. By the way, what tells you you have an equation? The equal sign. Yeah, if there's no equal sign, you don't have an equation. You do have an equal sign? Hey, that's an equation. If you have an equation, it implies that if you don't have an equation, this is not going to work. Are you guys clear on that? 